What I would like to share with you in these upcoming minutes is um, how to win in this game called life. But before I do this, I want to make sure that we're on the same page. So please imagine the following situation. You're back home on your couch. You're longing for excitement, something to entertain you, right? So you sit back and you start flipping through your Netflix account. You look into your watch list, you look through some trailers and try to figure out... Hello? Okay. Um, try to figure out what you like to watch for the night, right? So look into the first movie. It looks interesting, but maybe a little bit too heavy. So you look into the second. It's funny, but not the right kind of funny. So you take the third. It looks too dramatic. So you start to click faster with this bad feeling crawling up inside you that weekend is over, right? So fourth movie, fifth movie, sixth movie. This looks interesting, but ah, it's too long. Seventh movie, eighth movie, ninth movie. After the 10th option, you're done. You give up. There's just nothing right online, right? So you're tired, you're annoyed, you're, you turn off your TV in frustration. Okay, turn off your TV in frustration. During my daily work as a leadership expert, leadership mentor, I meet many frustrated souls, people, people who feel stuck, people who are overwhelmed by the sheer number of opportunities. And many of these people, they are so afraid to make the wrong choice that they end up choosing nothing. Okay, we're online again. This is basically how my life went in a nutshell, so in two minutes. That's just so ridiculous. Thank you, universe, for that one. So, yeah, um, by sharing my story, I actually, I want to reach a hand out to these people, to the younger generations especially, who are in self-doubt and um, who are trying to figure out this life. Because by sharing my story, I want to provide you with a, with a tool set, with a game plan, if you will, something that you can hold on to to find orientation in this ever-changing world. And um, why do I do this? Because I myself, I struggled a lot to find my way. It took me 15 years or more, actually, so I worked in more than 10 different industries, have seen companies from size 3 to 3,000 employees, and I've worked in multiple roles, different industries all across the globe. So um, what I came to learn, what my key lesson was from this journey is that in order to succeed, in order to win in this game called life, we must get to know ourselves. We need to accept our talents. We, most importantly, learn to say no. And what is absolutely our utmost importance is that we find this right context for us to shine with our talents, right? So how did I end up there? How did I get there? 11 years ago, I was at my lowest point. I was completely discouraged. I was angry at, angry at myself and I was so frustrated because my basketball career, it had stopped before it could really begin. And I had tried but failed my first try to study business and then I was just failing my first career choice as a sales representative. I was, for several months, I was too broke to even drive my car to visit potential clients. And so there I was, I was living back home with my parents, broke obviously, playing video games all day, and actually not knowing where to go with myself. And I had come to this point because I saw all these other kids from school who were so successful in their studies, I asked myself, what was I good for? Why do I not get anything done? And while questioning my very existence, my uncle called me. My uncle Dietmar, he's like a second father to me, and unlike myself, he did never give up on me. And he offered me a chance, an opportunity. Um, he told me that his coach was offering a seminar about the basics of individual psychology. And he invited me to go there to find my answers. So um, I questioned that. Obviously, I had my doubts because I was not as successful in the past, so I questioned what could a psychologist do for me, right? But on the other hand, it couldn't get that much worse. So, um, two weeks later, I sat in this seminar, and I remember this first day, it was a Friday morning, as if it was yesterday, because I was sitting there in this office with the coach and nine other people, and all these people were like 15 to 25 years older than myself, and I, I felt so small, so ashamed, because there was this successful entrepreneur who was, he had just sold his company, 
and he was fighting his ex-wife over custody for his three kids. And there was this successful doctor who had severe relationship problems with her husband and her daughter. And then there was me, the boy who was living with his parents again, just not knowing what to do with his life. I felt silly. I thought, how could I even remotely compare my childish problems to these real grown-up problems, right? But I came to learn that they actually could be compared because the coach went on explaining basics of uh, neurobiology and psychology. And he told us that essentially human behavior is driven by two emotions, by the feeling of community and by the feeling of inferiority. And throughout our entire life, we're trying to compensate this feeling of inferiority. We try to compensate this. And uh, how we do that is a very individual question that differs from person to person. And obviously, I was curious, how, what did I do? Like, what did I do to compensate my feeling of inferiority? And so I took a test, and according to this test, above all, I long to make other people like me. I'm so afraid of rejection that this is the most important thing to me to, to achieve in life, that other people like me, but at the same time, I would strive for dominance, which is pretty weird, actually, usually something people don't like. So I'm a so-called dominant people pleaser. And this mere thought of rejection is hurtful to me. And um, to overcome this, to overcome this pain, to avoid it, I developed two different behavioral strategies. The first one was appearing as smart and as useful as I could, and the second one was to agree with almost every opinion. Both these strategies, they worked, but they came at a price. The first one, since I was so eager to appear smart, uh, time always was my biggest enemy. So whenever questions came up, I never read them completely, I never listened to completely to them, I would just jump to early conclusions and try to answer the questions before I heard them out. And whenever this, there was a question, I had to answer this immediately, otherwise there was panic inserting in me and, and my brain was literally freezing up. And obviously exams and tests was quite challenging for me unnecessarily due to this. And for a fun fact, in Despite coming from a top business school, I failed several job interviews just to the fact that my brain was freezing up and I could not an answer simple math questions. This, this stuff came, kept keep coming over the years, and the last time, actually, uh, it came up during the Skype interview with the team from TEDx that was quite funny, because the guys that interviewed me in December, they did not even ask a math question. But um, where's darkness, there's also light. Um, thinking very fast trained me to, to become very good at improvisation. So when I come in situations that are unplanned, I usually get along very well. I'm the perfect firefighter, if you will. This second strategy enables me to get along with almost every person out there, right? So since external opinions mattered so much to me, I dig deeper and I learned to read between the lines and I would see information, interaction with other people that most others would overlook. But on the downside, I could just never stand disagreement. Never. So discussions were a hustle for me, and my calendar on a regular basis had overflowed with appointments, deadlines, and work results that I had to deliver for other people just because I could not say no. So jumping back to the seminar, this was my, my true turning point. And um, learning about this helped me get my life back on track. Because for the first time in years, I felt relieved. For the first time in years, I did not feel angry about myself. Because I came to understand that this, this entire situation where I brought myself in was only a logical consequence. It was the product of how I had been as a person and of how I, how I had interacted with other people up to this point. It all made sense. For 23 years, I had been playing the game all wrong, not knowing the rules, and then wonder why I did not score. So... It all came down to this one simple formula for me. A times B equals C. A being our behavioral strategies and our relationship to ourselves. B being our relationship to other people and their expectations towards us. And C being the life we are living as a result. So in order to improve this formula, we work on these factors, right? It's easy, math. So I started working on the A because that's what I could control. I started at the seminar, and this was a good starting point, but I wanted to know more, so I asked my parents how I was as a little boy, unfiltered and pure. And even though I can highly recommend to all of you to ask your parents the same question, I cannot guarantee that you will like what you hear, so <laughs> this is what my parents told me. Florian, whenever we went to the playground, we never had to look out for you. We just had to listen. You were always the loudest and noisiest child on the playground. As soon as we would arrive, you would rush into the sandpit and start shouting commands at the other kids. You told them what to build and how exactly they should do it. 
Surprisingly, these kids never had to have or seem to have a big problem with being bossed around by you. And you can see how this, this inner people pleaser has kind of problem with the story, right? So on, this, on the other hand, it explained things to me, a situation to me that I never had understood before. Because no matter which social setting I entered, I ended up being in some form of a leading role. So I, in, during my entire life in, in school, I was, the, I was the class spokesman. When I joined sports teams, I became the team's captain. And the list goes on. And I could never explain why people did that, why they selected me. All I can remember is whenever things were unclear and people did not know what to do, that views naturally would turn to me. And the people were saying, or I believe that they were thinking that, you must know what to do, say something to me. So this ability to provide orientation for other people must have been in me all along. But to bring that out from the sandpit or the basketball court into an office setting wasn't another other story, right? So for this, I had to improve my B, my, my relationship my relationship skills with other people because leading a pack of brothers or leading a sports team is something very, very different from leading a team of 50 people, all different in gender, age, and personality. This I had to learn the hard way when I took over my first bigger management role in 2016. For the first time, I was, I was leading more than just a smaller team of five people. And um, I took on this challenge with this experience, experienced CEO. He, um, we, we wanted to transform a 40 years old company with about 200 employees. You know, the usual now does, make them more agile. So I figured, how hard can that be for a natural talent and like improvisation talent and a natural leader like me? And as it turned out, it, pretty hard. Because after seven years of intense self-reflection, I thought I got it all figured out, right? I felt ready for this job, like I got this. So. I jumped into this challenge thinking that I got it all figured out until reality kicked in. After, after three weeks, I was just swamped with new information, new faces, new to-dos, projects, responsibilities, everything piling up on my desk, and everything, I just not, could, I just could, could just not handle it, right? It was sheer too many things to do. And it didn't matter how hard I worked, 12 hours, 13 hours, 15 hours a day. The task list, they just kept swelling. The other people would not listen to me, nor showed they the will to cooperate with me. And when I came home, I was tired, I was exhausted, but my mind would not let me sleep because it was still busy processing the entire day. So I was so exhausted after five weeks that I was literally crying myself to sleep. So what did I, di so what did I do there in, in order to get out of this mess? Actually, I asked for help. I asked for advice. I turned to my uncle, called him and said, man, let me hand here, like, how do I do these situations? How do I, how can I get this done? How can I get over this? And here's what he said. He said, Florian, this, the situation, the scenario you are in is like a big puzzle. For every new piece of information, you take a new piece of paper and you write it down. And eventually, there will be a structure coming up from this. And from there, you make a plan. But most importantly, you stick to that plan. You defend that plan. You must learn to say no. Sticking to this advice and following this guidance actually helped me getting the job done. But most importantly, I saw for the first time in my life this benefit of this word no, this one word I was most afraid of when other people were telling, were telling that to me. So I had never an issue to come up with a new plan, right? This was not my problem. But to keep this plan and successfully see it through, I need to say no. I need to be able to say that because there are 300 other tempting options. There are destructive opinions. And most importantly, there are self-doubts. So in my daily work as a leadership mentor, I meet many frustrated souls. And usually these people are just unaware of who they are as a person, what their strengths are, and what is their right context to shine. And to make matters worse, most organizations out there private or public, they solely focus on the measurable side of things. They seem to be blind to the emotional side of the human being. And due to this, I struggled for more than 10 years to find my way. I tried, and I failed, and then I tried again, and I failed again, and then I learned. And now, today, I can use my talents and everything that I learned to provide guidance for other people in the same situation that I've been in. And if there was this one thing that I could give my 23-year-old self, turn around to him and tell him, it was that, that rejection and failure are so essential to learning about ourselves. So please, please, stop trying to avoid that. 
So over these years, I played various roles in different environments. And there's, there are the things that I've taken from that. If we want to win in this game called life, we must create connection and alignment with ourselves and with other people in order to be able to connect with other people. We have to deeply know ourselves, but also accept ourselves. And to be able to align with other people, we need to train our empathy, but we also need to be able to say no. And please remember this. No matter who we are, no matter what our strengths are, we are all afraid. We are all united in this fear, this deep feeling of inferiority. And we are all afraid to make mistakes because others might think we're just not good enough. And no matter how hard we try, we constantly keep making mistakes because life is simply too dynamic to prevent all mistakes from happening, right? So please do yourself a favor. Just try, fail, learn, and find your way because you cannot expect others to tell you what to do with your life and be happy with the result. True self-efficacy and this genuine feeling of success, they can only come from within you. If we want to win in this game called life, we must get to know ourselves, accept our talents, learn to say no, and together with the other people around, in, around us, surrounding us, find this right context to shine. Thank you.